grab your favorite beverage, kick up your feet, as you ascend with me into the joy portal of soul reflections, fresh perspectives, fun ideas, and wisdom. Light to light and heart to heart. Smile and breathe even deeper as together we will soar above the perception of all hurdles and shine brightly as the light we are. Namaste and welcome to Light Laughter and Lattes. My name is Jerry Habstreet. I'm an Avesa Quantum Healer, Medical Intuitive, Self Ascension Intuitive Counselor, and your friend and soul connection for the next hour. So, how is everyone doing in this May 2020 experience? We are just at the beginning of a retrograde. And I know retrogrades can kind of scare people because they tend to take you backwards and make you look at things that you maybe haven't completely looked at. Or maybe you have and haven't completely released them and so they're back again. And I like to think that they're saying, you know, are you sure? Are you sure? They, get, they allow you the opportunity to rethink, to relook to re-examine and decide if you want to go a new direction or if you want to keep doing the same old. And so we have just entered a retrograde right now. We're at the very beginning of it. And, you know, what are you noticing? I think Sunday was probably the first day of the opening of it. And I noticed for myself yesterday, I noticed a whole lot of judgment. Um, lots of anger towards myself and lots of self-judgment. And then I noticed that I was breaking out in these spots all around my right leg. And as a medical intuitive, I know what that means. My right leg is about my past and it's about action steps that I've taken in my past. And so the judgment actually was about that. It was about judging myself on the action steps that I have taken and haven't taken in my past, thinking I should be somewhere else right now. I should be further along. I should have done more. I could have done more. It's the the judgments tend to be the woulda, shoulda, couldas. And so this is something that I went through yesterday And it happens to be kind of an an energetic, unconscious underpinning of the world at large right now. So just uh, noticing, did you notice your yesterday or today, what you might be experiencing? What's maybe in your subconscious that you're not totally aware of? You know, and it's so great because the universe, or let's just say it as the power of our ability to reflect to us and draw to us what's playing out in our conscious or our unconscious, we'll always bring something towards us that will trigger these unconscious things. And for me, it was um, a connection I made with someone who I hadn't met before. And I just kind of went online to you know, learn a little bit more about her because I knew that we had to collaborate on something. And I saw all the YouTubes that she had put together and all the programs she had put together and all the things that she had done. And of course, that triggered me like nothing else. And so, you know, beautiful, right? Thank you. Thank you for these triggers. Thank you for showing me where I still need to do a little bit more work, where I need to add a little bit more compassion And that is actually the topic of the show today is compassion. And it's kind of a play on words. It's more about compassion, claiming and calling out our true passion. But in order to do that, we have to have compassion towards ourselves. The compassion towards ourselves is really the first step in order to bring out the come passion. If we are holding on to any anger, 
bitterness, grief, judgment about how we have done things in the past or how we haven't done things in the past, the would have, should have, could haves, wishing that our past would have been different or better, all of that energy gets held usually in the sacral chakra, which is the second chakra. It's our organs of creation. It governs the reproductive system, the urinary system, the excretory system. So just think about these areas where we are eliminating that which no longer serves us. So it's a very powerful center if we're holding on to the past or holding on to angers and judgments. You know, oftentimes we will be holding on, we're holding on to energies that don't serve us. So you may notice symptoms in those areas of the holding on. And it'll create congestions there. And if there's congestions in that area of the body, it stops the energy from moving up to our third chakra, which is our chakra of empowerment, our chakra of trust our chakra of passion, the fuel engine that moves us forward into doing that which we love. It's the chakra of joy. And truly, it is the abundance center because when you are abundant with your joy and your passion of moving forward, you are literally abundant. It's like your banking center, your monetary center, where you can really bring about more money in your life and abundance in your life financially when that area of the, your body is freed to be in your joy and to be in your passion. So humanity at large right now is moving through what Elizabeth Kubler-Ross has called or she has kind of coined the stages of grief And it doesn't matter really what the situation is, whether it's divorce or loss of a person. What we're going through right now with the COVID-19, there has been so many losses on so many levels, whether it be jobs or family members or vacation plans or even the seniors in high school who've missed out on their proms, their graduations saying goodbye to friends before they go off to college, you know, whatever it may be. Humanity at large is is moving through these five steps. And she wrote a book about it called On Death and Dying. And I really have to giggle because I took an On Death and Dying class when I was at in college and had to study this book. And this was long before my conscious mind even knew that I would be doing what I'm doing now. And here, here I am back, right back into it right now, you know, teaching this. And her stages that she, she talks about that really we all cycle through, not necessarily in the same order, but, you know, we can go through it over and over and over again. We can change some of the, some of them in a different order. But the basic steps are denial, then anger, then bargaining, and depression, and ultimately acceptance in, in varying degrees and varying orders. And so let's take a look at the first step. You know, when denial is when it something first really big happens and the energy is so overwhelming that you can't even accept it. You don't even know how to process it. And I'm sure everyone is listening has probably had some kind of experience like that. I, I've had several of them in my life. Grief is an overwhelming emotion. And it's intense. And often sudden feelings of needing to pretend the loss or change isn't happening. Denying it, you know, gives you more time to gradually absorb the news so you can begin to process it in the body. And it's a common defense mechanism and it kind of helps to numb the intensity of the situation. And so as you start to move out of the denial stage, 
the the emotions that you were hiding that were too difficult to look at the fir- in the first place will start to emerge. And when they start to emerge, oftentimes it's anger. And the anger is really just a moving forward, powerful, strong emergence of energy. But anger is like a masking energy. It's hiding the pain that's below the anger. And oftentimes this anger gets misdirected and um, projected on other people. Um, Very common, and that's exactly what's playing out right now. All it took is, you know, one event in Minneapolis, Minnesota to trigger people that had been just waiting for an outlet or an opportunity to release this energy. And it's like dominoes across the world. And so we are seeing a massive release right now of anger. But ultimately, if you can see through this, it's an energy, it's a pain, it's a hurt below the surface. And the anger is just the energy coming out. And once this anger is out, people will start to really feel the hurt. And so the next stage behind the anger is often a bargaining stage. You know, it's the place of the shoulda, woulda, coulda's. You know, if I had done that, this may not have happened. If I would have done this, that may not have happened. Or, you know, people will often bargain with God. If you take this away or take that away, I promise to do this or that. And it's kind of just a phase where you're trying to get a grip on the emotions. You're not sure what to do with them and you haven't fully released them yet. You got rid of some of the anger, so the initial surge is gone. But yet there's still more and you don't know what to do with it. And your brain, God bless it, is trying to make sense of it all. And then once you move through that stage, often there's a stage of depression. And it's the real sadness and hurt that lies at the core of all of it. And this can be a stage that people sit in for a very long time. They might move through it quickly. Um, You might feel foggy or heavy or confused through this stage. A good awareness to have is that it's just a stage that you're passing through and it's a normal stage and you're moving through it. You're not living in it and you're not swimming in it and it will pass. It, It always does. And then the final stage is acceptance. And acceptance is not necessarily a happy or uplifting stage of grief. You know, it doesn't mean you've moved past the grief or loss. However, it does mean that you've accepted it and have come to understand what it means in your life now. And so we move through these varying stages, you know, anytime we encounter a loss. And the key is if you can just realize their emotions, they're natural. You know, if you're in the anger stage, find find a positive place to release the anger. Find a punching bag. You know, find something to throw. Go play ball. Hit, hit, hit a ball with a bat. That's a great way to release anger. You know, have a two-year-old temp, temp, temper tantrum. Jump up and down and scream. Beautiful thing to do, especially if you're in an apartment and there's a lot of people around you. Grab a pillow and swing it over your bed and hit the bed with it. Get in your car and scream. It's just a release of emotion. And sometimes you you need to do it until you get sick, literally, because the energy coming up might make you sick. But the idea is to let it out in a healthy, positive way and not to project it on other people because that's where... The problems occur is when it gets projected back out into the world again and it gets passed on like a ripple in the ocean. And so um, if we can find healthy ways to release these emotions, it makes everything a whole lot better. So I love how I was just given a real life, well, real live example of this literally as I was, as I am producing this podcast 
just as I'm getting ready to play the push the record button, someone is outside with one of those weed whackers at my apartment building and the the walls are really thin so you can hear it all on the recording. So I have to stop and wait for him and then I get ready to start it up again and he'll start it up again and literally I was ready to get my oven mitt and go (laughs) throw it at him. (laughs) Now luckily I know better. I know to see what it's an energy arising within me and I know not to react but to respond to the energy. And so I stopped and did my method of release, which is I actually have Egyptian healing rods that can just move energy through me very quickly. So I use those. Um, Back before I had those, though, I would have swung a pillow or gone for a run or something like that. But always when I'm getting ready to prepare some kind of a topic, I will get a real life example of what I'm going to share because you know what better way to be able to share knowledge or wisdom than having to go through an experience firsthand. So I really invite you now as we're going through this massive explosion of energy this week and truly for the rest of this month because there are a lot of key energetic dates to notice when you're reacting Notice when you're responding and how you are reacting or responding. Are you responding responsibly? Are you lifting up to see the higher gift? And are you using tools to help you resolve these energies as opposed to projecting them out into the world? I'm going to actually give you a couple of tools right now to help you with these energies that might be arising during this time and to bring more compassion to yourself so that you can call in your true passion and experience it and live it. So the first practice is called the safe practice. And this is something that you use right on the spot immediately when you're triggered And it's safe, S-A-F-E. The S in safe stands for stop. You notice you're triggered and you're just going to stop. The A is acknowledge. So you're going to stop. You're going to acknowledge the energy, whatever that energy is. And then you're going to take a moment to feel it. That's the F. Oh, okay, I'm feeling triggered. I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling sadness. And the E is to expand. Expand up beyond the issue. Lift if you can. Oftentimes, quick little triggers are just that. They might not even be what's really at the core. So it's a good idea to expand beyond and see truly what's hidden beneath the trigger that's presenting itself on the outside. So that is called the safe practice. And if you're able to really use that in the moment, you can release things very quickly because you are bringing a lifted, expanded view to something right on the spot rather than stuffing it away, denying it, you know, not acknowledging that it's there or getting upset and projecting it outward and you're putting a whole nother series of energies into motion into the world by doing that. So the safe practice is a lovely way to master some of those energies that you might be experiencing during this month. And the next tool is a forgiveness practice. I know I talk a lot about forgiveness and I think I've shared this practice before But it is so important. It is really the key to everything, to key to your freedom, key to your expansion, key to your joy. There is just so much that has gone on in all of our lives since the time we were conceived that there's truly a lot to forgive. And so first of all, some things that forgiveness isn't because There are circumstances and events that happen that really seem unforgivable. But to hold on to unforgiveness is for you to hold on. And it's a congestion in the body 
that will disrupt the the proper flow of energy through your body and it can cause dis-ease. So to be as healthy as possible and to have the most energy available to you for your joy and happiness, forgiveness is imperative. So something forgiveness isn't, it is not forgetting or pretending it did not happen. It did happen and we need to retain the lesson learned without holding on to the pain. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. Forgiveness is not giving permission to continue hurtful behaviors, nor is it condoning the past for future behavior. And forgiveness is not excusing. So it's not saying that what happened was okay but it's just a freeing up or letting go of the congestion in the body. And so I'm gonna use my example that I gave earlier on about my judgment that I had towards myself over not being where I think I should be on my path, not moving forward fast enough, not doing enough things. Um, For some people, it might be seen as not being as successful as they thought they should be. And that caused some breakouts on my right leg because I was judging my actions or my steps in in my past that I've taken. And so I'm going to use that as an example because I think it's relative to right now. But I invite you to insert your own, own situation. And it can be used towards another person, it could be used to towards an institution, or it can be used for judgment upon yourself, something that you did or you are not happy with yourself for. So the process goes like this. You want to give a name or a title to the forgiveness problem that you are experiencing. So in my case, I will call it the the not moving forward problem. And so you give give it a title and then you're going to want to kind of think about, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how much is this bothering you? You know, is it really, really bothering you? Maybe an eight or nine. Um, so you kind of want to check in. Your goal is to bring it down to a two after you do the forgiveness problem or process. And so the process begins like this. Um, First, we're going to call in our higher healing resources because it's always a great way to get extra assistance and extra energy added to your intention. And it's also a way of setting the intention for the experience. So Father, Mother, God, Universe, Soul, please, I'm calling you in now asking for my higher healing resources to be available to me as I move through this forgiveness process of releasing myself for what I feel I should have or could have done better or differently. And so then I'm going to begin, even though I have this forgiveness problem with moving forward in the way I think I should, I deeply love and accept myself. I choose to clear this now. And now you're going to want to tap the side of your index finger on your dominant hand. And so you're going to just gently tap where the fingernail meets the skin on the side of that index finger. And so just tap, tap, tap and repeat. I am now releasing all parts and all judgment associated with this not moving forward problem. And you're going to use whatever your problem is that you've titled it. And now you're going to move to the little finger on that same hand and you're going to tap the side of that right where the fingernail meets the skin. And you're going to repeat, I now release the sadness and anger I have held relating to this not moving forward problem. And then you're going to keep tapping, tap, tap, tap. And now you're going to put your hand on your heart and repeat, I now unconditionally forgive and release myself or whoever it might be for this 
problem of not feeling like I've moved forward in the manner that I should have or could have. I recognize that I did the best I could given my state of consciousness at the time. And then you breathe and take a breath. So, and you repeat this statement. I now unconditionally forgive and release myself for my role in this problem of not feeling like I moved forward in the proper manner. I did the best I knew how given my state of consciousness at the, consciousness at the time. And take a breath. So, I now unconditionally forgive myself and my body for holding this pain inside me for all this time. I know that we have been doing the best that we knew how given our state of consciousness. And take a breath. So, I now forgive God, spirit, the universe for creating a world where one could suffer as I had have suffered. And take a breath. So, and now if you feel like you haven't completely released it all, you're going to want to repeat that again. But the idea is to forgive whoever the perpetrator might be, whoever the institution might be, or if it's you to forgive you, and then to forgive your body for holding the energy, and then you know forgive God or the universe or whoever it, the, the outside force is that you feel that you could attribute this to. But to kind of forgive all aspects because we tend to we tend to blame layers and layers of things and people for experiences. So we want to hit the forgiveness at all those layers. And once you've completed that, it, until you've gotten your number down to, say, a two, um, once you get it to a two, the energy will just effortlessly release on its own through the period, you know, of a day or so, if you drink lots of water and keep your energy moving. And then you're going to want to kind of fill yourself up with these statements to, to fill up the spaces and places that held that energy. All the places in my mind, body, and life where this has been held are healing now. And you take a breath. So, I now release the habit of having had this problem. And you take another breath. So, all the parts of me that got something out of holding this problem are healing now. And take a final breath. So, and then that is the practice. And it's funny because we do get in habits of holding on to things and get in habits of repeating things. And oftentimes we have these things because we are unconsciously hiding a bigger, greater part of us that we're scared to have come out and be the truth of who we are. So we, we literally cover ourselves up with these things. And so that's the reason for the final statement of all the parts of me that got something out of holding this problem are healing now. It really is speaking to your unconscious mind where you probably weren't even aware that that's what you were doing. So hopefully that will bring you some assistance when you need it. If you really want to dive in deep into some great forgiveness, I have an even deeper forgiveness practice on my website. And my website is Jerry Hab. G E R I H A B dot Wix site dot com. And it's a, a um, website made by Wix, so it's Wix site. And if you go under healing tools, there's a practice there called the forgiveness practice. It's a seven day spiritual cleanse. It's called the seven times 70. And you get up in the morning and you write for 35 lines, statements of forgiveness and you're forgiving other people, institutions, and then in the evening you are doing another 35 times where you're forgiving yourself. And you're doing this for seven days straight, and if you forget to do it one time, you have to start over. 
Um, it's a powerful practice and it will free up lots of beautiful energy for you. So I invite you to visit that, visit my site and download that practice and use that as another tool for yourself. So at this point in my show, I would like to invite Kathleen Carlson from Montana. I've had her on the show before. She's a Kirtan artist, and I know she's got some great chants around compassion that she can share with us. But first, Kathleen, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here again. Nice to talk with you again, Gary. Yeah, well, when I think of think of compassion, I'm called to all the beautiful energy in the Hindu traditions of Vishnu and um, all the great gods and goddesses. So many of them are gods and goddesses of compassion. So I naturally thought of you and the work you do with chanting and calling in those gods and goddesses. Um, wondering if you could just kind of share with everyone, you know, what is the value of of the chanting? What does it do for us? Sure. So it works on a lot of different levels. So there's the, the spiritual level or sort of that unseen vibrational level. And then there's also the emotional and psychological level. And then there's the physical level. So one of the reasons why I do a lot of the chanting in Sanskrit as well as English um, is because every different language you use your mouth and your tongue and your teeth a little differently, and all of that is connecting to meridians um, that are in the roof of your mouth and that are that are connected with your gums. So it's like you're giving yourself an acupressure treatment in your mouth as you talk and as you sing. So in different languages, we emphasize different sounds, and therefore we're stimulating different meridians. So English is a beautiful language. Um, some people think that it's descended from angelic tongues. And then there's Sanskrit and there's Hebrew. Gurumukhi is another sacred language um, that they use a lot in Kundalini yoga. So each one has a little different flavor and you can sort of access a different level of energy. So then on the emotional and psychological level, each of the gods and goddesses in the Hindu tradition and also in the Buddhist tradition, they have a little different energy. So it's almost like the Catholic saints that I was raised with, you know, when there's a certain one that that you call to if you lost something and there's someone else that you call to, you know, for some other need. So they all qualify energy in a different way. So if you are looking to focus on compassion, you might call to one goddess uh, versus if you're in a situation where you need protection, you might call to a different goddess because they each have a little different, a little different energy. Okay, beautiful. Well, so the the show is really compassion, but it, it, it I did kind of a play on words come with passion because mm -hmm. truly before we can even ignite our passion, we have to start with the heart and have compassion for ourselves. And when we <laughs> do the forgiveness work and we free up the energy in the lower chakras, it frees it into our solar plexus area, which is the area of empowerment and passion. So I thought if we could do a one of your chants, and if you could tell us a little bit about the, the god or goddess you're going to use, we can do a chant on the compassion for the heart, and then we can do one after that on calling in our passion. Okay, great. So I would say... Um, since we're doing this at a distance and nobody is going to have any lyrics in front of them, let's start with one that is a very simple chant that is Om Mata Om. So Om is that hum of the universe, and it actually has a masculine qualification. And then Mata is a universal name for the Divine Mother. So Om Mata Om is sort of going back and forth, you know, with those two energies and specifically calling for the Divine Mother. So, you know, we always think of the Divine Mother as as very heart-centered. Like, you know, even in the West, we have the Sacred Heart of Mary. Um, and that's also true in other traditions. So this is very simple, Om Mata Om. And then the next line is Maha Mata Om. So Maha is the highest. So the highest energy of the Mother, Mama Om. So it's just interesting that in so many languages that mm sound is associated with mother. So mother, ma, mommy, 
you know, in Norwegian, it's more, M-O-R. So bestamor is a grandmother, the best mother, literally. So, you know, there's, uh, it's like cross-cultural, you know, so it's in the Hindu tradition, but it's also to in other traditions. So we'll do this one. And this one also has a very, a very tribal kind of feel. So you get that sense of connecting with other people as well. And I think right now in our society, you know, connecting with other people in a positive way um, is, uh, is a great blessing, even at a distance. So Om Mata Om Maha Mata Mama Om is the chant. So I know this is something that you do as a, you know, it's, it's you, it's what you do. Um, and during this period of time, you know, it takes a group of people to come together and do kirtan. Um, have you been able to be of service during this period of time, bring people together when we're all kind of separate with through kirtan? Yes, that has, that has been a really interesting journey. So with kirtan, usually there is a group who is singing together. So sometimes it's call and response. So I might sing that first line, you know, Mata Om, and then it, and then it comes back. But, um, switching to an online or at a distance kind of forum has just been, um, quite an experience. First of all, trying to learn some of the technology, but also I saw this really across the Kirtan world. You know, there's people who have gotten together groups of, of, you know, to 250 people chanting. But because of the technology, what happens is that you can't really have everyone hearing each other. So it becomes a very interesting situation where you've got someone who's leading, but if they try to bring everyone else in, just based on the technology, everybody's equal. So suddenly you have 200 people and the leader is completely over, um, their voices, you know, overwhelmed. And then you don't have anyone leading and it gets chaotic pretty quickly. So what I've seen is that people have been extremely understanding. Um, everyone was jumping from a very live in-person event um, based practice into this kind of, um, you know, when I'm singing, I'm only hearing myself and I don't hear anybody else. So that has taken a lot of patience and a lot of compassion um, for those who are trying to offer this service. So I have gone through Zoom, I've done Facebook, and now I'm working more with Instagram because here where I live in rural uh, Montana, you know, outside, I'm outside of Bozeman, um, my phone reception is, is much faster than my computer. 
So I've ended up doing uh, Instagram kind of events. And it's been interesting, the reaction for the people who have attended. Some people have actually really appreciated um, being in their own home, um, in an environment that is comforting for them, and then also knowing that nobody else could hear them. Because mm-hmm. if you're in a yoga studio, people are still a little self-conscious, you know. If you have, you know, five people, they're self-conscious because they feel they'll stick out. And if you have 20 or 30 people, now everybody's sitting close together and they feel like their neighbors can hear them singing. So it's been very interesting that some people have really appreciated being able to sing as loudly as they want and not worry about being off key and really put their heart into it because they're participating and they know there's a group. They can see all the names, you know, lined up of everyone who's in attendance, um, but no one else can hear them. And that actually has helped a lot of people to really come out of their shell, you know, so there's been there's been a, a positive impact there. It doesn't work for everybody. Some people really, you know, want to hear the sound in their environment of everybody chanting. But for some people, it's actually um, been a blessing and, and been a good experience. Well, yeah, you know, when I'm hearing you t- share your story, it's there's just so many hidden blessings in everything. So I'm yes. hearing you first say that, you know, a lot of people have a hard time finding their voice. You know, singing mm-hmm. out, I can't find my voice or I don't, I'm afraid to be seen in my voice, hearing my voice, you know, and, and just your service alone has helped them open up, even if they're just finding their voice in their house by themselves. Sometimes that's where you have to start. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's a great place to start. Yeah. You know, so before I forget, um, can you let everyone know where they can find your Instagram if they want to do some of your morning mantras? Sure. It's at Vocal Medicine. So V-O-C-A-L, Vocal Medicine. And they can also find me just at Kathleen Carlson. So, you know, if they search for either one of those. But but that particular um, live event, that's happening every morning. And that's actually been a really nice thing, too, because when I was doing events, um, you know, once a week, or even if I did them a couple times a week, or a band kirtan once, and then my own mantras once, um, it wasn't a daily spiritual practice for, mm-hmm. you know, as a group. But, you know, we do the half an hour in the morning and that works well for people. It works well for my phone. Honestly, I have a four year old phone and my phone starts to overheat after half an hour of live streaming. But it also works really great in people's schedules. And and that's something else that's been a blessing is, you know, for them to have that half an hour every morning. So. Montana time, I start at 7.30 and just run from 7.30 to 8. And then I post the lyrics for each morning set on the vocalmedicine.com website. So if people want to, you know, uh, see the lyrics or have them in front of them. And then it's become actually more of a spiritual practice, even for the people that are right here local with me in in Bozeman, because it's every day. So they have a reason to just chant for that short period every day. Versus come and chant for hours and then don't chant for a week or a month or, or whatever. Right. Um, so, yep, it's on Instagram at Vocal Medicine. Wow. We are really finding our feet in a new world, aren't we? <laughs> yes. It is definitely, you know, it was like those first few weeks in March, you know, mid-March to the end of March when, you know, everything was going down. It was, it was like I would wake up in the morning and I would think, oh, everything's changed. You know, you wake up in the morning and you there's those first few seconds before you remember. <laughs> and then I think, oh, everything's different. My kids aren't going to school. My older kids lost their jobs. Uh, we're all here together. It's a different world. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I remember waking up to thinking, okay, I got to rewrite my script now. <laughs> yeah. How do I want to look like, how do I want it to look like now, you know, and okay. to start nice. with some new healthy spiritual practices right away when you wake up Um, that is something that I wasn't doing because I was teaching every day and I had to be there by 7 a.m. sometimes so I didn't have time to fit that in you know I would still fit it in but it wouldn't be right in the morning where I prefer it to be because what a way to to begin your day and start out your day with a blessing so yeah that yeah, has so. been really good just to get up in the morning and feel like, you know, and even though I've, I have a, you know, I always was running a business at a distance. 
still there was a greater sense for, okay, this is, this is my day and I can schedule it. And people became very understanding of the fact that, you know, now it wasn't just me trying to work at home and balance, you know, kids and work and trying to exercise and my chanting. Um, but everybody, everybody was doing that. And so suddenly, we were one in a different way. (laughs) And, you know, having your kids walk behind you when you're on a video camera in a meeting was not a big deal because everyone was in that situation. Yeah, well, I'm certainly seeing a lot of compassion out into the world. I mean, if you can keep your focus away from the news, because certainly there's a lot of people that have been hurt and they're going through the grief cycle and experiencing the anger and such right now. But if you can stay out of that and above that and go out into the world, people are just so happy just to be together. And, you know, I'm dancing with a group of friends and some of the men are like, geez, they're apologizing because they're rusty. And I'm like, no, I mean, you have a get a a jail free card for a long time. I'm just happy to be here dancing. I don't care what you dance like. Right. (laughs) And it's kind of how everything is right now. I did just just as long as we're all out healthy and and being together and and you know finding purpose. If, you know, if we can just have compassion on each other, we'll we'll all get through this. Right, right. Go if you ahead. want to end with another chant, yes. Um, this one is specifically to Kuan Yin, who is a Bodhisattva. So that is uh, she is a female Buddha. Actually, she's in she's in a number of traditions. She is primarily Buddhist. But she's also, there are variations in the Jain tradition um, and in the Hindu tradition. So the goddess of mercy. And the idea with Bodhisattva is that she has pledged to remain with the evolutions of earth until all beings who choose freedom are free. And her name means the one who hears. So the idea is that She had already achieved full Buddhahood and she's about to, you know, step out of this dimension onto the other side. And then she hears the cries of the world and comes back. So that's why she's the one who hears and then comes back in in compassion. So this one is in English. um, Goddess of mercy, let your healing flow. Goddess of mercy, let your grace be known. Let your love be felt on earth. Let your voice be heard. So I've done this a lot in the last eight weeks, you know, with, uh, you know, with the group that joined me online, um, because everyone really, you know, felt, uh, want to, you know, wants to give, wants to be calling forth and wants to be bringing healing to the planet. So, um, so this one has worked well in this, uh, in this, this challenging period. Great. The goddess of mercy.
Goddess of mercy. You know, yeah. You know. it, it, it's so much fun after, and I've been to many Kirtan events to just sit and feel the energy and the, the resonance of the harmonium through all your cells after those yeah. beautiful chants. Yeah. And it, you know, it's like you were saying with the, you know, the compassion coming from the heart. And for me, um, that's really where I feel the chanting, you know, it's, it's always, even, even if I start and I'm not in the best mood in the world, it's like, <laughs> you know, it just happens, you know, it's just, it just activates the heart, you know, so, so that's why I'm still in love with it. Yeah, mantras are some, similar to that too. If you repeat them over and over, they just have a magic that way. So, yeah. well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful to <laughs> <laughs> share a little bit. Yeah, so grateful you're you're finding your own way going forward and uh, finding new creativity and uh, moving forward with your mission. That's wonderful. Great. Well, have a good day. Thanks, Kathleen. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm, bye. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. There is something about chanting and singing with others when everyone is gathered together with the same purpose to just open their hearts and have joy and to sing that seems to heal and fix a lot of things. And as you go forward in this week, we are in an explosion energy, a great big month beginning of a triple retrograde and in a month of awareness and so be very aware of everything around you and I mean everything around you even things that you think that aren't for you might be for you if it's something lingering in your subconscious it might be people that are talking next to you what are they talking about You know, it's in your matrix for a reason. And that's part of the experience of awareness is to really be aware of everything and follow the messages. What are they trying to say? Because it's your soul guiding you. And retrogrades are a beautiful time for that because they will show you the things that need to be looked at, the things that need to be reflected on, understood so that you can move forward in a new way. And the fifth dimension is here right now. It's been here for a while, but it is more available and accessible than it ever has been before. Last week's show was specifically on that. And the key to entrance is compassion. So that is why a show just on compassion. And with the explosion energy, that is all about our passion if we use our energy in the in the direction of that. Certainly we can direct our energy in other ways, but why not direct it in the area of your dreams and of joy? And if you are interested in a bit more about this fifth dimensional stuff and how do I get into it and what is it all about and how do I stay there and what will my experience be like while I'm in it, there is a class starting next Monday I believe it is June 8th. I'm not certain. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but it's starting on Monday. And if you go if you go to Facebook and look up Jerry Habstreet, it's on my business website, which is Joyful Living. You will find it there. I'm going to post it so you can join in. There's time to join in and it's a 12-week class. It's a donation class. Come and join a group of great beings who are all heart-centered, looking to make this world a better place and to do self-healing and who are um, all working on 
living in the fifth dimension. So join us there if you feel called. Have a great week, everyone. Use this time and this energy to do great things for yourself and the world. Namaste. Thank you for listening in to Light Laughter and Lattes. It has been my honor and pleasure. Please visit jerryhab.wix.com and check out my services and my packages. I work with people in person and from a distance, and I also give free 15-minute consultations. And so until next week, may your week be filled with light, laughter, and a whole lot of love. Oneness Talk Radio. Hip, fresh, and fun. Discover your positivity portal 24-7 and experience unique talk radio from around the planet, perfectly mixed with music that enchants your soul. At a moment where everyone is being challenged to stay awake and release fear, OneNessTalkRadio.com is here to remind us all of our divine mastery. Imagine the activating power of intentional oneness and universal healing available at any time. With shows in multiple languages and formats, relax and explore. Our commitment to uplifting music from superstars and fresh talent combined with your favorite shows will inspire you to stay all day and soak in the gift of connection. Once you experience our signature oneness moment, in only three to five minutes, your heart will expand as miracles unfold. OneNessTalkRadio.com. One world, one voice. Expand your vision. Your vision.